You're watching Revelation, the program with a biblical perspective. Now is the time for Revelation. Thank you for joining the program. Today's guest is John Mackay, geologist and international director of creation research. He heads up a team of scientists drawn from several disciplines studying the evidence for the biblical account of creation. John, this is to continue with what we were saying last week uh, about creation versus evolution. There's more evidence today, is there not? for creation than there is that we evolved? Well, there certainly is. As we get into the realm of micro-machines and, and unravelling the DNA code, uh, what we are beginning to learn is that the reason we pay G Bill Gates so much money for all the computer coding systems that they intelligently create, and those guys demand that money in order to create it in a real sense, right? And the computer code itself is not made of anything really, really significant. You're not paying for the stuff it's made of. You're paying for the intelligence that put that little bit of stuff together. And intriguingly enough, it works very similarly to your DNA code. So that if you look at a computer and somebody sends a virus, it messes it all up. I mean, our office was bombed with that love bug virus and, you know, we opened it up two hours before the general warning came out and it destroyed things. Now, you interfere with an organised code and it just disintegrates. Yet at university they taught me, given long enough, accidental changes to the DNA code will turn it from fishes into frogs into professors who write books about it. Right? Now the fact is that denies everything we've learned about coding. Um, even if it's SOS, the old Morse code, or simple English language codes or computer graphic codes, they require a lot of intelligent design accidentally change them and it always disintegrates. So the fact is even our DNA shows all the evidence of brilliant coding. In fact it's smarter than all the codes in Windows 99, Windows 2010 or whatever we're going to get up to. Because you see the thing that's puzzled scientists for so long is when you look at the information that's needed to make one of these bodies, if you were to sort of write it out in English longhand code, you know, like the cat is sitting on a rat, you know, that's English code. If you put the instructions for making a human being, the ones that we know of, and we don't know them all yet because we haven't totally unraveled the code, but if you write it out in English, then you would be filling several hundred volumes of Encyclopedia Britannica. And yet each one of these DNA strands is invisible to the naked eye. You know, it fits all the DNA coding basically on the head of a pin. And you look at that and say, how can you fit that much information in such a tiny little space? And the reason is the brilliance of the coding. So that if you think of, say, English code, we go the rat sat on the mat. You can read it from left to right. If you try reading it from right to left, it doesn't make any sense. If you try reading it from left to right and then starting at the second letter, it doesn't make any sense. What you find with a DNA code, there are many parts of it where you start one sentence here and you read from left to right, and then the other sentence will read from right to left, and it says something totally different. Then the next sentence will start from the second letter, and it will keep reading, and it will say a different thing than the first one, which only started one letter before. Then the next sentence starts in the third letter, and in fact you can even see now why one little change messes up things big time because it's not just affecting one instruction. It's affecting all of them. They're going in all sorts of directions. And so the kids at Chernobyl who got accidentally dosed with radiation, it's their DNA code that's been messed up. And you don't hear of one evolutionist rushing to Chernobyl, hoping that it'll evolve faster because of the dangerous radiation. Everybody knows that x-rays and all that, they are only harmful things. You don't evolve. In fact, you can't. I like the way you drew the analogy with the uh, computers um, and the code that they produce. What it says to me is that they're reliable. So if we've got a program of software that is a word processor, when I go to use it, every time I open that up, what's it going to produce? Just the, exactly what you paid for. Yeah, and what I expect. Yeah, that's right. Now, In fact, if you make a copy of it, you'll find...